What's up guys? Welcome back to the Passive Income Star channel. My name is Skig. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at creating a spreadsheet and a pie chart for your portfolio in Robinhood using Google Spreadsheets. So get ready for some free game. We're about to get it. All right, guys, so just a quick update on the portfolio before we go ahead and jump into making that pie chart. As you can see right now, the portfolio is back up a little bit to uh, 33K. Um, today, the gain so far is uh, $274.21, or it is up 0.84%. It started out the morning at roughly 33K and uh, $25. And then it shot all the way up. At this point, it was at 33,150. It dipped back down here and kind of pretty much reached the same price again. And then it's been kind of running flat for most of the day up until say 4 p.m. when the market closed. It was at uh, pretty much the price that it's at right now, and it's pretty much flattened out so far. Uh, but you know, I'm happy with today's results. Considering that the market has been beaten up, I would say, over the last week since Black Friday, you know, the prices have been dropping like crazy. And um, whenever this happens, you know, it's, you know, some people panic, but I tend to try and see this as an opportunity to purchase, you know, and that's why um, I always try to make sure, you know, even if it's just a couple hundred dollars, you always try to make sure that you have some kind of cash reserve in your portfolio so you could probably snatch up a couple of shares of a particular stock that you are watching you know but probably it was just not priced with um i would say within the type of um budget that you would like to spend on that particular stock all right so we're gonna hop right over to my um passive income portfolio uh, spreadsheet here and this was created in um, Google Sheets as you can see here I have the tickers listed the next column is the price the shares and the equity so as an example the first stock here is NOBL the price is $74.91 and I have four shares and the current total equity for four shares is $299.64. And these prices are updated in real time because the information is actually pulled directly from the New York Stock Exchange. So every time you reload your spreadsheet, it refreshes the information and makes sure that the price is the current and updated price for each stock. And this list has all the companies that I have shares in, stocks and ETF. Now over here on the right hand side, you have a pie chart which gives you a visual representation of each company or each stock that you own. So normally I recommend that you don't put more than 5% five to six percent off your holdings in one company and the reason I say that is if you have only five percent and something goes wrong with your, that particular company it does not affect your portfolio as much um, in this instance as you can see I have a bunch of companies here but then there's a large chunk of the pie which is Amazon and the reason for that is I got Amazon back in 2017 when it was roughly about 800 per share and I bought a couple of shares. The stock has since gone to 1800 per share, so I'm holding on to this. However, if you find yourself in a situation like this, what you could do is you could set up a stop loss 
for this particular stock. And pretty much what a stop loss does, it says, hey, if the stock falls below a certain price, then the system will automatically sell the stock. So you stop the losses. So that's how I would recommend that you address the situation if you're in a situation like mine with Amazon being roughly about 30% of my portfolio. The remaining 70% is pretty much in dividend paying companies. And as you can see here, if I go over the pies, I have our WPC here and we have Boeing with 6%. Go up here, we have ITA. Go up here, we have waste management with 2%. So pretty much I am very diversified in this sector here and pretty much I would say almost all of these stocks are dividend paying stocks. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and try to recreate the same type of portfolio in Google Sheets and we're gonna do it with say 10 stocks. So let's go. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead now and hop on over to Google Sheets. You could get to Google Sheets by just going into Google and type in Google Sheets, click on the first link, and it will pretty much just link to your um, Gmail account and provide you with the option to create a spreadsheet. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on a blank sheet. As you can see here, I only have two sheets inside um, Google Sheets. I have my passive income portfolio and then I have another sheet which tracks my dividend payments per month and gives me a total for the year. So let's go ahead and click on uh, creating a blank sheet. And we're gonna go ahead and give this sheet a name. All right, so next up we wanna go ahead and recreate the columns that I have inside my um, passive income uh, sheet and we have four columns. The first one is ticker, then price, shares, and equity. So let's recreate that over here. All right, so now that we have created that, we're gonna go ahead now and enter the code to pull in the stock price. So to do this, you're gonna go ahead and press the equal sign and then start to type Google. And you'll notice that Google Finance pops up and what you're gonna do is go ahead and select that and you'll notice now it has an open bracket. And what it's looking for is a piece of code that you're going to input inside that bracket and then close the bracket. So in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the information of the ticker that's entered in the cell A2, pull the information based on that ticker and reflect the price in B2. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in A2 and then close the bracket. And then once we go ahead and click outside of that cell, it's going to, if you do it correctly, it's going to return with this message, which means that the value on this cell is null. There's nothing there. Now let's go ahead and type in the first ticker for the stock that we want to add. So the first stock is going to be ABV. And if we hit tab, you notice it says loading and then it brings up the price and that's the current price for AVV, which is $86.98. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and format this row or this column to reflect currency. So we're gonna go ahead and click this button here that says format as currency. Now we can go ahead and also enter the amount of shares. Let's say we have 10 shares of AbV. 
And for now, we're gonna leave equity blank. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and put the next ticker in, which is gonna be GM. Now, once we go ahead and hit tab, look, nothing happens. The reason for that is there is no code in this cell. If we go back to the first cell, you notice it has the code information here. Now what you could do is go ahead and retype this same code here, but change this from A2 to now A3. Or you could simply highlight the cell where the code is located, move the cursor to the lower right hand corner and when it turns into a cross, click and drag down and it's gonna replicate that code throughout the remaining cells. As you can see here. Now when you look at it, you'll see that the GM ticker has now been updated with the current price of G GM stock, which is $35.54. For this, we're gonna put in that we own 20 shares of GM. And we're just gonna go down the list now and fill out the rest of these stocks, making it a total of 10 stocks. All right, so now that we've finished adding in all 10 stocks, we have AbV, we have General Motors, we have Arbor Reality, we have Pepsi, we have Johnson & Johnson, we have Walmart, we have Ford, we have Reality Income, Disney, and Microsoft. These are all the prices currently updated from the New York Stock Exchange, and these are the amount of shares that we have per stock. All right, so now to get the equity, the equity is gonna be calculated by the price per share multiplied by the amount of shares. So to do this, we're gonna click on this cell, we're gonna click equal, then we're gonna click B2 multiply by C2. And the multiplication symbol is the star. And if we go ahead and click outside of it, now it shows the total equity is $869.80. And that represents our holding for 10 shares of the stock ABV at $86.98. Now we could go ahead and recreate the same formula here for this particular stock or we could do what we did before and simply just drag down and have the code replicate and there it is all the stocks are populated with the total equity you have in the stock all right so now that information what we're going to do next is create a pie chart so to do that we go down to this button here in the lower right hand corner and when you hover over it with the mouse it says explore once you click on the explore button it pops up another window and if we scroll down here you see a pie chart so we click on the pie chart and then we go ahead and click on this button here that says add and we can X this out now and we're just gonna go ahead and move this over so it lines up with the actual sheet. So once completed, your spreadsheet will look like this and then you will have your pie chart indicating your holdings in terms of size based on each stock that you own in your Robinhood portfolio. So in this instance, you can see that for Microsoft, we it represents 16.5% of our portfolio. Then next up, we have Disney with 16.1%. Then we have Reality Income with 8.3%. And if we go over here to Johnson & Johnson, it shows that it's 15.3%. So this gives you a visual representation of your portfolio inside Robinhood. If we go ahead and we click on the Explore button again, you'll see once this data is in there, it pops up with information that you can actually ask questions about the data and it will pull 
the information based on the questions that you put in. You know, and it gives you some examples here. If we scroll down some more, you have different ways that you can format the data in terms of colors. You can also play around with the different colors for uh, different uh, pieces of the pie. And you could choose to do different, you know, diagrams. You know, you could use uh, these bar charts right here. And you can also make like 3D pie charts. So it's pretty, you know, it's pretty helpful. And it does give you some insight to your portfolio and just gives you an idea of, you know, how you can dive deeper into where you're putting your money into what stocks, which ones, you know, have more weight and which ones are kind of behind and which ones you want to also beef up. All right. Now, the code for Google Finance is available here. There is pretty much a sheet with the uh, different types of code. So as you can see here, they have some example code. And when you go ahead and scroll down, it gives you the different types of things that you could call. So you could call the price. Uh, you could call the price on open, meaning as of the market open. You can call the low price for the day the volume, the market cap, the trade time, the date delay, the volume average, the PE, the earnings per share, the 52 week high, the 52 week low. So this is actually some pretty powerful information. And you know, if you start practicing with this and try to incorporate this into your, your spreadsheet, I'm sure this information will be nothing but valuable to you. You know, I am constantly trying to work on this myself and the whole purpose behind this is just to monitor my finances. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for this actual page so you guys can, you know, practice inside Google Sheets. The other um, spreadsheet I wanted to show you real quickly is my dividend payments. So this is a sheet that I created to pretty much monitor my dividend payments every month uh, this sheet gives a projection for the year so right now this is for 2020 and as you could see it has several columns the first column is the stock so these are all the tickers this one represents the number of shares that I have this one is the dividend paid per share so for example noble I have four shares and it pays 36 cents per share this is the stock price currently and this is the months so we have January, February, all the way to December. So Noble pays in January for four shares. I will receive a dollar and 44 cents. It will pay again in April and it will pay again in July. And then the last payment will be in October. So it pays four times per year and this information pretty much just gives you a good overall picture as far as your dividends towards the bottom here. It totals out the payments that you should receive for each month. And when you scroll all over to the year for 2020, if everything remains the same, and I don't scale up on any more stocks. I keep all the same stocks that I have. As far as dividend payments for 2020, from January to December, I should receive $1,194.93 in dividends. You know, and I'm tracking this information because I am serious about my investing, and you should too. Um, once you start to track your finances, you're gonna realize that you're gonna learn certain things about yourself. You're gonna also learn how to plan and execute strategies a lot better. All right, so thank you so much for watching the video, guys. If you found the information here useful, please go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, go ahead and smash that like button. And I make new videos every Friday. So thanks again for watching, and y'all have a blessed day.